So here we are, finally, SQL Server on Ubuntu with Active Directory integration. Now, before we go any further, we're going to have to go and create the user and also create the SPN in AD. Since we can't do that directly from Linux at this point, um, well, sorry, but the first splash screen is going to be Windows, guys. Uh, as you can see, we can do this easily enough with PowerShell and isn't going to take very long. We're also going to create the SPN. We're just going to use the Microsoft documentation as the example here. So I'm going to just take out the example values and insert the correct values as needed and then enter the command. So that's our two steps done in AD. We're good to go. We're going to flip over now to our Linux machine where we can happily run uh, the Kerberos authentication. Now I want to show you this before we go any further because I get a lot of info about this which is what happens when you type in the domain in lowercase. Remember this is case sensitive so don't do that. Keep it in the same case. Now we're going to quickly go ahead and get our uh, SPN and we're going to get it and from that we have a value that's output. Now this is important because what we'll do next is create a key tab file and when we're creating the key tab file we're going to need that uh, equals to that you just saw above. Now it can also be other values but it's important to note that value down because you will be entering it on the font below lines. So having opened the key tab utility, we're going to just fill it in. Again, these are mostly Microsoft um, information. You can find it directly from their site. I'm not going to go into each and every value, but simply to put in the last part is my domain. The previous part is the fully qualified SPN, which you saw in the previous screen. And after E here, this is the encryption type. So we're just entering in the defaults that are specified in their examples. Um, after that, you're going to be prompted for a password as you hit the return line. Please proceed to enter the correct one. Um, now, once that's done, we will create the second line in the example config, which will just hit the up arrow key because we're only changing the last part, which again is the encryption. Um, other than that, basically the two lines are identical to all intents and purposes, so you don't have to worry about retyping it too much. You then need to write the key tab file, so this is the bit where you tell it uh, write key tab to uh, the correct file location. So I'm going to use the example one, which is the Microsoft Secrets blah 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 um, dot key tab file. We are then going to quit out of the utility. I'm going to quite a little bit divert into the utility for a second because I want to show you that you can actually see the values in a key tab. So if I do a list, you see there's nothing because there's nothing created. If I do a read and then go do the uh, key tab file, I can actually pull in the values. And then if I do list again, I can see what's there. So these are nice examples, but nothing that I need to potentially worry about right now. And I'm just going to get out of this. So um, from this point, I'm going to go ahead and start configuring the, the rest. So and now we're going to lock down the permissions on our key tab file and we're going to configure it within the uh, SQL. So this will require a system restart. It will tell you that it needs a system restart. So we're going to do the system restart of the SQL. Now, last but not least, we're going to go and test this now. Now I've taken the opportunity to install the um, SQL operations um, studio earlier today. So I'm just going to connect to the SQL instance and create the Windows account on the SQL instance. You can do this with any SQL client. I like this one because it happens to be um, OS independent. You can run it on Windows, you can run it on a Mac, you can run it on Linux. So I've kind of become second nature now to use it. So we just go ahead and create a login with the domain credential. So I'm just going to use the uh, lab domain administrator and from Windows. Uh, at some point, I'm sure it'll say from AD in future, but for the moment, the current release says from Windows. So now we can then go and select all the login types and see whether the login was created. And I can also show you how it looks from uh, the integration here. So if I go ahead and click on the server and then expand the security tab, you'll be able to see that the login is also there. And as you can see, there's the login.
Now we didn't cover the details of how you get the domain running or some other stuff, but that you will find in earlier videos in the links above. If you like this video, give us a like, if not, you know what to do, and subscribe for more content.